Hey, we're going to work on lesson 34 today. So turn in your books to page 111 and we will get started. The first thing I want us to do is remember what the definition of a verb is. Okay? A verb is a word that does an action, shows a state of being, links two words together, or helps another verb. Right? Now, I want you to look at exercise one. In this exercise, I want you to look for the action verbs, okay? Put a circle around the action verbs in exercise one. Pause it if you need to. All right, we're gonna check it. The first one is paints. An artist paints pictures. Paints is your action verb. In the next sentence, engineers design skyscrapers. Design is your verb. And in the next one, composers write music. Write is the verb. All right, so verbs that help other verbs are called helping verbs, okay? And you know the list of helping verbs, so I'm not gonna go over them with you. Study them when you study your grammar cards. All right, let's look at exercise two together. Now this sentence has a helping verb and an action verb. I want you to write an HV over the helping verb and an AV over the action verb. All right, you should have something that looks like this. HV over the word may because it's the helping verb. Squawk is your action verb. So you put an AV over squawk. Now look at the diagram and you can see, just like in class, that we diagram may with squawk, both on the verb line. All right, now in the last lesson we in class that we did, we talked about state of being verbs. And remember, state of being verbs are just the first part of that chant. And again, we've got that in our cards, so I'm not going to go over them. But just make sure you study your grammar cards and you look at the state of being the state of being verbs. And remember, in class, we talked about state of being verbs just show that you exist or that something exists. Um, we read some really boring little sentences. Um, so like. Like, look, look at exercise three. These are like the ones we did in class. Are you still in bed? I am. I am is a complete sentence. It's not a fragment because it has a verb and a subject. Is your sister still in the room too? She is. She is is also a complete sentence. It's just, it has a state of being verb is. I want you to read through the rest of these and just notice how they use each of the state of being verbs in a sentence. Okay, if you're ready to move on, let's look at exercise four. I forgot to tell you to pause it and um, work through exercise three. Um, but in exercise four, I want you to see that in the previous exercise, we could use those state of being verbs all by themselves, right? She was, it is, you are. They work alone. However, look at exercise four. We've got some state of being verbs that need the help of a helping verb, okay? So, will you be in the yard? I will be. Be is your state of being verb. Can you please circle the helping verb that is helping each of these, um, each of these state of being verbs? Circle the helping verbs. All right, if you're ready, we're gonna check them. I will be. Be is your state of being verb and will is your helping verb. He should be. Be is your state of being verb. Should is helping it out, right? And it has been. Has is your helping verb. Got it? All right, so look at exercise five with me. The verbs am, is, are, was, were, be, being, and been can do all of these things. They can either help another verb, show a state of being, 
or link two words together. Remember how I said that you guys are students and you are daughters and you are also sisters, but you're still just you? Well, am and is and are, was and were, be, being and been are the same way. They can be these things in different situations. Okay, look at exercise six. Verbs that link two words together are called linking verbs. So like when you're linking hands with somebody, you're joining hands and you're connecting, right? You're connecting one thing to another. So links in a chain or are, are, are parts of a chain are called links. And a link is something that connects things together. So look at this sentence. Honeybees are insects. Are is a linking verb in this sentence. And the linking verb are links the subject honeybees with a noun. Do you see that? Insects. Now, remember in class when I went ahead and told you about predicate nominatives? These are nouns that are renaming the subject. It's like it gives the subject another name, right? It, it's kind of like it's describing it, but it's just, um, it's a noun. It's not an adjective. So honeybees are insects. Insects is a special word called a predicate nominative. Look at the next one. I am Sarah. The linking verb in this sentence is am, right? And it's linking the subject I with the proper noun Sarah. And Sarah, if you look at it, it can rename the subject, right? So am, um, am is linking I to Sarah. Look at the next one. They were firefighters. The linking verb in this sentence, what is it? It's were. Were is the linking verb, and it connects the subject, they, with the noun, firefighters. Firefighters renames the subject, right? Who are they? Well, they are firefighters. They were firefighters. Firefighters is the complete predicate of the sentence. Remember when we talked about the complete predicate? Firefighters is in the complete predicate. It's not the whole thing, right? Um, firefighters is a noun, but it's in the predicate. Hmm. So a noun or pronoun that's in the complete predicate that renames the subject is what a predicate nominative is. That's the definition of a predicate nominative. The, the word nominative, it, it's, it means name. So predicate nominative means that something is renaming the subject and it's located in the predicate. Does that make sense? All right, let's look at how to diagram it. They were firefighters. Now, this funny little backwards diagonal line is how you show that it is a predicate nominative, right? It's not a direct object. Remember, direct objects have to have an action verb, and that we put a straight line here, right? But you can't have a, you can't have a direct object without an action verb. This is totally different. This slanted line shows that we have a predicate nominative. Okay, let's look at the next one. We can just show, it's showing, basically think about it like this. Think about it like firefighters is renaming the subject. So it's like that diagonal line is like shooting it over. Does that, does, I don't know if that helps or not. Okay, so you can just kind of imagine an arrow um, and that's why you slant it. It's like it's renaming. Look at the next one. Honeybees are insects. Got it? These are just giving you some examples. I am Sarah. This is how you would diagram that one. All right, let's look at this one. Juncos are snowbirds. Snowbirds is the predicate nominative, okay? The word snowbirds is a noun that renames the subject, juncos. It's in the, it is the predicate nominative and it's separated from the linking verb by that slanted line. And you can imagine that it's like dotted, boop, 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 shooting it over, okay, and renaming it. All right, so in this lesson, we've been reading sentences that have nouns that follow linking verbs, okay? Predicate nominatives follow linking verbs. But remember, a noun can follow an action verb too. If you need to rem remind yourself about direct objects, 
go back to lesson 29, 30, and 32 and look and just kind of give yourself a reminder. But nouns that are direct objects have to come after an action verb, okay? They have to come after an action verb because a direct object receives the action from the verb, right? They can't follow a linking verb. Okay, so let's look at exercise 12 just to remind ourselves. Kim baked a cookie. Now, cookie is a noun, right? But it's not renaming Kim. It's not. It, there's an action verb, not a linking verb. Baked. What is being baked is the cookie. The cookie is receiving the action from the verb, so it's a direct object. But Kim is a girl. There's no action verb there, is there? It's a linking verb, and it's linking the subject Kim to the predicate nominative girl. All right. Don't even worry about the rest of this, extra, you know, the 13 or the dictation exercise. You are finished for today. Good job.